My dear class five students, welcome back. Your science teacher here. And today we will start with our new chapter, okay? Interesting chapter that is force, energy, and machine. Clear? Force, energy, machine. Machine, you all uh, are aware of this like word, right? Familiar with force, energy, machine, but we'll study everything in detail, clear? So let's start with force. What is the force? Force, here in the textbook it is given anything like that we can push or pull. Okay, push or pull of an object is a force. Yes, to push something or to pull something you need a force, right? To push a chair or a table, you need a force, clear? So uh, somehow force and motion are related together, okay? So today we'll study different type of force. What this, uh, what are the effects of force? What this force can do and types of force. So we'll start with effect of force, clear? Okay, so what, uh, what will be the effect of force? If, you are, if I tell you to write some points regarding this, will you be able to write, my dear class five students? Yes, I'm sure you are very smart, the smartest students here. I know you'll be able to write. So we'll discuss one by one. You know, force can change. Force, the first one. Force can change. Force can change or make the stationary object move. Clear? What is stationary? Stationary means anything at rest. Clear? So how many of you like to play football? Raise your hand wherever you are. Okay. So yes. So if, the, if you want to play football, if you want to kick a football, okay, then the football at first it will be at rest, right? And if you apply a force, what will happen? Now you'll see if you apply a force. If you, if you kick the football, means that means you're applying a force, right? That means we are uh, making the stationary object move, right? The football which, is, which was at rest is not at rest anymore, clear? Or force can, uh, force can make uh, the object move faster. Clear? When uh, suppose your friend uh, just passes the football to you, okay, uh, applying uh, just a little force, okay. Once you get the football, you apply it uh, with a very strong force. That means the movement will be different, right? One will be. Uh, one, your force, the, applied, the force which you applied was more stronger, right? So uh, it will move faster now, clear? So from the first effect of force, you have to keep in mind that force can make a stationary object move, or it can make an object move faster by applying more force. The first effect, we are clear. Now let's go to the second effect of force, okay? Second effects of force. Now, force can increase the speed. Increase the speed, okay? Force can increase the speed of an object. Now, this also, like, I'll give you a very practical example. How many of you like uh, to ride a bicycle? Clear? Bicycle, like, to start, we need a force, right? Now, if you have to increase, if you have to increase the speed, then what do you have to do? you have to apply more force, right? So you just imagine, okay, science, you have to imagine, clear? Uh, okay, so now for uh, riding a bicycle to increase the speed, we have to apply more force. And what about decreasing the speed? Even we have to apply the force, clear? Now the third effect of force, I'll write over here, okay? Force can change the direction, okay? And I'll explain here uh, by giving an example. Force can change the direction of a, 
a moving object. Clear? Now, uh, for this, let's take example of a cricket, a cricket game, okay? So how many of you like uh, to play cricket? Wherever you are, raise your hand. Okay, I can see that, okay, many of you. Okay, so now if you are the batsman and if you have to hit the ball, clear? Then if the ball come towards you and if you hit, then it will change the direction or not. So force can change the direction of a moving object, right? Now you have to imagine, okay? I want you all to imagine, you are the batsman, okay? And now you are about to hit a moving ball which is coming towards you, what you will do? What will happen to the ball after you hit the ball? It will change its direction, right? So now are you clear with the changing the direction? Okay, now the last effect of force, okay? We have many but we'll uh, study the four important effects. So we're done with the first three and the last one is force can change the shape of an object, clear? So the fourth one will be force can change the shape of an object, okay? Force can change the shape of an object. Now, uh, we, we, we see like in the market that we have pots of like different size, right? Different size, different shape. Now, just remember, uh, you have to imagine a, a potter, okay, a potter. A potter, by applying a force, he can make pots of like different shape and different size, clear? So now uh, we can take example for that under the change, uh, under uh, the fourth effect that is changing the shape. By applying force, we're changing the shape of the pot, right? Okay, so I'm sure you are clear with all the four points. The first force can, uh, the, effect, the first effect of force would be changing the, making the uh, object which is at rest move by applying a force or uh, making it like moving it like faster by applying more force, clear? And the second one is increasing the speed by applying force. The third one, changing the direction like in the cricket ball, changing the direction. And the last one, changing the shape like the potter, pot, clear? So. We are done with the effect of force. We'll study now different types of force. Clear? Okay, so student, the first type of force we will be gravitational force, force of gravity. Clear? This force is also very practical. You have a mass, right? You have a weight. So now if you jump, what will happen? If you jump, you'll be attracted towards the gravity, right? If I throw this chalk, it will be attracted towards the gravity down. So this is a simple example of gravitational force. Now who discovered this force, okay? Now, uh, it was back in uh, the late 18th century, okay? 18th, 18th century, yes and English physicist and mathematician, clear? Sir Isaac Newton, he discovered, and he, uh, he discovered this law of gravity, okay? And he is also known as the father of modern science. You have to remember that. Isaac Newton, okay? He's known as the father of modern science, okay? Father of modern science. Now, how did he discover that? Okay, let's maybe uh, one fine morning, one fine day, he was just like, have, uh, like a poetic, okay, like a poet, he was just with a pepper pen, uh, he was just admiring the beauty of the nature, he was sitting under the apple tree and suddenly apple fall on the ground. From there he started, he started to think a lot, okay, he imagined why this apple has to fall on the ground, okay, from that, from just from that thought, from just from, the, from that, uh, he discovered the law of gravity, clear? So gravitational force, I'm sure, I'm sure you're familiar with this now, I've given an example, anything, anything, if you throw, if you jump, or if you jump, or if you throw any uh, object, it will fall towards the ground, gravity, because there's an attraction, clear? 
Now, let's talk about the second type of force. Second type of force will be electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. Okay, electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. Okay, so for this force, let's do some activity as given in your, as mentioned in your text. I'm sure a uh, hair comb, I'm sure you all have the hair comb, a plastic hair comb, okay? So you need, for this activity, you need a hair comb, okay? You need a piece of paper, clear? Piece of paper and a hair comb, that's it, clear? And we need you, clear? So now, once you're ready with that, what we can do is that you just rub your hair, okay? You just comb your hair with the comb, okay? That's the first step. Comb your hair, now the second step is to tear the pepper in a small, small, small piece, clear. And after that, you try to bring the comb, you try, okay, this is the pepper and the comb, you try to bring them close together. What the result, the observation that you'll see is, the small bit of pepper will get attracted with this comb. It will get stick, okay? So this is an example of electrostatic force, clear? Because why, why? Because while rubbing the, your hair, while combing your hair, this comb got charged, okay? They got charged. And as a result of getting charged, now it is attracting the small, small bits of paper. Clear? Okay. Now, the third type, okay, we are done with gravitational force. We have also studied who discovered this law of gravity and the father of modern science, that is, Isaac Newton. Now, uh, the second type of force we have studied, electrostatic force. Now, the third type of force, third type of force is, okay, uh, magnetic force, okay? Magnetic force. And this magnetic force, you just need a magnet and an iron, okay? You'll see what observation you'll get is, you'll get, uh, observe an attractive and a repulsive force. So this is an example of magnetic force. Yes, you can bring any iron, any metal, and then you can bring it close, any uh, iron, and then you can bring a metal, uh, magnet close to each other. You'll see the force. You'll see there will be an attractive and a repulsive force. Clear? And all type of force, okay, when you reach higher class, so all type of force, uh, like, see, um, Water, we have like one liter, two liter, right? And like for uh, the weight, it is we measured in terms of kg, uh, kilogram, right? So force, the SI unit of force is Newton, okay? This you have to remember, Newton. And this is mentioned in your text because force will always use Newton. Like uh, 20 N, 30 N, like that. So this N here signifies Newton. So I apply 20 Newton of force. I apply 30 Newton of force. It works in this way, clear? Okay. Now, uh, as per your textbook, now we have the last type of force which we'll study, and that would be frictional force, okay? Frictional force. So frictional force, without this force, you wouldn't be able to walk, clear? Without this force, uh, it'll be possible, it will be impossible for you to ride as well, clear? This force, friction, occurs when you rub any two object. By rubbing any two object, the force that we get is a frictional force, clear? Now, for this, now you have to imagine, okay? You have to imagine that uh, uh, the ground. I'll just give you two scenarios. One is you have to imagine walking on a ground, and one you have to imagine walking on a ice. Clear? So walking on the ground would be very comfortable, right? Comparing to walking on the ice. Even in ice, you'll be able to walk, but uh, it'll be Walking on the ice would not be very comfortable because there is a less friction. Clear? Now, 
uh, working on the ground, that's what normally we do. This uh, we have, there will be more friction. Because there is a friction between, the, between your shoe and the ground. Clear? And without the friction between the shoe and the ground, you will not be able to walk. Clear? Now, do you observe, okay, while walking, as you are stepping forward, what do you observe? You observe that uh, you also have to push backward, right, your other foot. So this is an example of a frictional force. Clear? Now, without uh, friction, you wouldn't be able to write. Why? Because, see, to hold the pencil or to hold the pen, you have to apply a force, right? So there is a friction, there is a force between the pencil and your hand. Clear? If there was no friction, it will just slip away. Clear? That means you, you will not be able to write. Since there is no friction of force, right? No, no friction. But since there is a friction, we are able to hold the pen, a pencil or pen tightly and we are able to write. Clear? Now, uh, while walking on the ground, it is very, uh, we are able to walk comfortably. And why? We have to say that there is more fact friction because there is uh, the shoe and the ground. There is a friction. There is more friction there. But what about uh, the eyes? There will be a less friction. Clear? So without friction, everything will slide away. Clear? Without friction, I will not be able to stand like this. Clear? Without friction, I will just slide away. Clear? So this frictional force is very important. Clear? Okay, so uh, these are the four types of force. Even in your exercise, they have given uh, right different type of force, right the effects of force. So by now, I'm sure class five students are very smart, you'll be able to write that. So I'll give you a, a home assignment to write the effects of force, okay? What are the effects of force we have discussed, right? And also, uh, these types of force, write it down, gravitational force, this is the force of gravity, uh, electrostatic force, which I've explained. We have done the acti we have we have performed an activity, right? So recall it back, and then uh, you list down the exam examples. Clear? Now, what about this magnetic force? Clear? If you have a magnet at home, and I'm sure you'll find any iron particles, so you can just bring the magnet and the iron near, and you'll observe attractive and a repulsive force. And this frictional force, you can perform a simple activity. You can just walk, okay? Just by walking also, that will be an example of frictional force. Clear? Okay, so uh, students, we are done with this uh, force, the topic of force. Clear? Tomorrow we'll start with the next topic. So go through it, stay home, uh, uh, stay safe, and then we'll see you, I'll see you in the next class. Thank you so much.